Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Silveria Peña Sr. and the health of Paul Young and Mario Guerra. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowledge inflates with pride, but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about the eating of meat, a sacrifice to idols. We know that there is no idol in the world and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, there are, to be sure, many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. But not all have this knowledge, there are some who have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat meat sacrificed to idols, their conscience, which is weak, is defiled. Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction, the brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wound their consciences, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The Word of the Lord. Amen. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit, when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Probe me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if my way is crooked, and lead me in the way of old. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. If we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you, a good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. In Corinth, they would offer up sacrifices to all the different uh, quote-unquote gods that they had. And the Christians, because meat was often, uh, was not very often uh, given during meals, and because after a sacrifice you would share the meat with those around you, they would sometimes go to these um, sacrifices offered to other quote-unquote gods, and then eat the meat, because it wasn't God, it was just a, an imagination of the person. It wasn't something that was affecting them, it wasn't something that was offered to any god that was real. There's only one true god, and so this kind of uh, play-acting of offering meat to some idol or something that they made up was not going to affect them by eating it. But there were some who were scandalized by this. There were some who saw these Christians who professed to believe in one Lord Jesus Christ would then go off and say, oh, I love Hercules. Yes, thank you for the, for the meat. Because that was something that they would do to get more food. They were hungry and so they did it. And St. Paul is saying to them, yes, I'm glad you know that there is only one God. Through him we exist and, and for him we exist. We live through him and, and with him and for him. And I am glad that you know this, but there are some who are still weak in the faith among you. And for their sake, you should not use that little knowledge that you have to be puffed up and say, well, there's only one God, here I go, you know, and I'll do this. It's a sense of those who know uh, what sins are and those who can distinguish between just kind of sins and simple vices, those who know that sometimes things that are very popularly recognized as sins sometimes are not sins at all, just simply frowned upon by people. I won't give examples because it, it, it just will be kind of the same thing. But there are certain things that people deeply consider sins that are not sins. Yet, even if you know this, you will refrain from doing those things for the sake of your brothers and sisters who may not be as strong in the faith as you are, or sometimes as you're supposed to be. This is St. Paul 
saying to us that even though we may know certain things, it's not to puff up ourselves. There are some who like to know things because, well, they just like to know things. And they, they very want to just kind of uh, satisfy their curiosity by knowing things. There are those who know things because they want people to know that they know things. That's pride. But there are those who know things in order to build up others. And it's charity. Not to flaunt their knowledge, but simply to use it for the good of others. And so St. Paul says, if that's the case, if someone is scandalized by eating meat, then I will not eat meat. It is far better to limit myself than to risk the damnation of my brother. It's far better to limit myself than to risk my brother being or sister being scandalized by what I have done. And so in our lives, as you go about the day, what things can we do in order to build up the other, build up those around us, build up our brothers and sisters so that all may be strong in the faith? Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and may partake in the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, with joy we proclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. 
For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, and they are offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cassaginus, John, and Paul, Cousins, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask for their merits and prayers in all things. We even be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation. Count them on the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, the eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, give the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, we proclaim. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings, the serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them. As once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty. So all of us who, through this participation at the altar, Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with our holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetual, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and who graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. Anthony, Immaculate Heart of Mary, and Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy. Amen.